In this video, I'm going to help you to go from beginner to pro in Miro by teaching you 100 helpful tips, hidden features and nifty shortcuts right inside Miro that you can use to save time and impress your colleagues and friends. Considering that you have friends that use Miro, which is quite unlikely. Anyway, timestamps are here in the bottom. Let's start learning. Quickly open a fresh Miro board. To do this, go into your brother's address bar, type Miro.new, press enter, and it will create a new Miro board in your own account that you are ready to work on. Drag elements from the toolbar. This is a fast and easy way to add elements to the board. Here's how it works. Go to, for example, text and simply drag it out to the canvas. This works for sticky notes, shapes, comments, and even frames. Create sticky notes without your mouse. For this, click into a sticky note. If you see the blinking cursor, simply press tap on the keyboard to create a new sticky note. You can do this as many times as you want it. It even respects the boundaries of elements and frames. Duplicate elements in any direction. Simply select an element like a sticky note, then hold your Alt key and use the arrow keys to duplicate that element into any direction. Yes, got it. Next, zoom out for a full board overview. If you're on a board with a lot of content, simply hold Alt and press 1 to zoom out and see everything there's on the board. To zoom in and center your selection, select an element like a frame and then press Alt plus 2 and it will center it perfectly in view. You can use both of these last tips together. So you can zoom out with Alt plus 1 and then select something on the board and then press Alt plus 2 to quickly move in and center it. Move with the spacebar. Normally you right click and then drag yourself along the canvas, but I think it's a little bit faster to hold down your spacebar when you want to move around and release it when you want to select stuff. Next, toggle the map. The shortcut here is the same as in many games. So press M on your keyboard to open the mini map in the bottom right and then basically you can use the mini map to quickly move around the board. Toggle the grid. For this simply press G on your keyboard to toggle between no grid and grid. The next tip is one shortcut to rule them all and that shortcut is Control plus K or Command plus K on Mac. So if you use this, this opens the command palette and here you can search for anything, for example, a Kanban. And you can also use it for opening things such as the timer. Neat, right? How to quickly find elements on a board. For this, we're using the board search by pressing Control F or Command F on the keyboard. Then in the search picture, we want to find Valdo. So we type Valdo in here and we have two results. And the second one is Valdo that we're looking for. We can also use the search feature to add bookmarks to parts of our board. For example, here to a frame by just adding favorite at the end, marking this as my favorite template. Now, if I use the search and I search for hashtag favorite, I can see all of the templates that I have marked as favorites and quickly jump between them. Quickly connect elements. To do this, click on an element and you see these light blue dots here. Click on that and it creates a new connected element here. But in that case, I want to connect this element to that one here. So I can also click on it and drag it and then connect it to that side. To modify the connection line, simply click on it and then you see the blue dot and drag it around. Then new anchor points appear and you can repeat this as much as you want. Then to remove them, just simply double click on them and then everything will be back to normal. You can also change the position of the connection line text by pulling it down or up, or you can even pull it above the line or below the line, whatever floats your boat. Next, if you have a mind map, you can actually merge the mind map nodes by clicking on them and then dragging them to another node like this. Link mind map nodes. To do this, click on a node and then you see the blue light dots here again, and then drag them out to another node to connect the two. Match multiple images to fit better to each other. For example, here we have motivational images and quotes that literally have no meaning. Sorry, but it's really the case, right? So we can select them all. And then here we see a button for resize image. We click on that and we want to match them in the height. Click that. Now they're all matched in height and they look more aesthetically pleasing. To quickly crop an image, just double click on it and then you can immediately resize it to exactly the size that you want. Next, replace images to keep the same height. For this one, select an image, for example, here the icon, and then click on replace image here and then replace from board. Now I can select the other icon here, press confirm, and it will switch it out and keep the same dimensions. You can also replace images with copy and paste. So here I have an image now on my clipboard, then I can select the pen icon here, press command V and boom, there's the new image. Quickly organize elements with Smart Align. If you don't know this trick, this one will save you so much time. Take a look. So if you have a lot of sticky notes, the way you could organize them is kind of moving them around, but it's a little bit tedious. But there's another way to do this. So select all of the sticky notes like this. And then here in the top right, you see like a circle with four dots in them. 
click on it and then move it to the left or right drag it around while holding it and you can immediately resize it and it will perfectly distribute all of these elements <laughs> By the way, this video is sponsored by our sponsor, no one. Because this channel is tiny, we have no sponsor. But if you want to support what we are doing, check out our course called the Facilitator Masterclass on our website, facilitator.school. It's basically everything that we're doing. And if you like learning from this video, you might like learning from us in this course. But that's enough now. Let's jump back into the video. Say frequently used images. This is another hidden feature and here's how it works. So if you have an image that you use often like a picture or maybe a logo, then right click on it and click on add to saved files. Then go to the sidebar, click on more apps and then search for upload. Then open this app here and you see saved files. And from here now I can drag it in. And this is available on all boards that you work on. Get precise with object dimensions. For this one, go to the main menu at the top left, then go to view and then toggle on object dimensions. From now on, if you resize an element, you can see the size of the element in the bottom right. And then also if you move elements, you can see the spacing in between them. All of that helps you to neatly tidy up your board. You can also use object dimensions to create yourself spacer elements to do even neater designs. So here I have spacer elements that all have like a specific width and height and I can use them in a layout like this here to easily snap elements to them. So like this and like that. And then I can also crop this image here perfectly and this one here as well. And you can see now once I remove all of these spacers, everything looks neat and tidy. Get your angles straight. If you're moving or duplicating elements, you can hold down the shift key to duplicate them at a perfect 45 or 90 degree angle. You can repeat this multiple times like this. That is one way to build a chessboard. Select only what you need. You notice you want to select something on a mirror board like the text here and suddenly you move something behind it. Here's an easy way to fix this. So instead of simply clicking and then moving directly, click and then hold it and you see a crosshair appearing. And then if you select something, you only select what is within the selection. For example, with this one, I can perfectly select all of the text here and then simply remove the color with one click. Create templates from content. This is super fast and easy to do. Here I have a workshop housekeeping slide. All I need to do is select it and go to three dots and then save as template. From here I can save it as template and also choose who can see it. Create multiple teams. If you're on a business plan or hire, you can actually create as many teams as you want. Use that for your own advantage to structure your account a little bit better. For example, the way I use it is that I have a team for my own personal space. If I create private boards for me, I have a space for client work and also for events within the company so that we can better separate them out from like internal boards. Currently, there's no way to reorder the projects and how they appear in the left sidebar of the Miro dashboard. But there's a quick hack that you can use to bring them exactly in the order that you want. And here's how it works. Let's say we want to bring the general up here. Then I click on the top on the name of general and I put a number in front of it. Because the one is now in front of it, it jumps to the top. And with that small trick, I can quickly reorder all of the projects. Speaking of essential features any app should have, Miro also doesn't have an archive function, but we can create one. For this, just create a project and name that project archive. We can also add an emoji to it, then click create project. And now you have an archive where you can store boards that you no longer need, but might want to access at a later time. If you use Miro a lot, your dashboard might look a little bit like this. A lot of boards and all look kind of the same and it's not very easy to find the right board. But we can take that dashboard to this dashboard, which is much more organized. And how? I'm going to show you. All you need to do for that is to create a rectangular frame in which you basically create a board cover that you want to have on your dashboard for each of the boards. And then all you need to do is you need to click on the name of the board here at the top and then click change thumbnail. Then here, click on select board. Then you're going to make this a little bit smaller. You're going to fit it exactly to that frame like this and then apply a thumbnail. It takes a second and then we have a new thumbnail here. Another tip that might help you to find your boards more quickly, especially if they have long and very similar names, is to change the view from grid view to list view. In list view, the text stands out much better and it's more easy to find the right board. Boards that you use a lot, I would recommend that you star them. That way they appear under your start boards. And these boards here are a collection from all the boards from all teams. So it's a great way to bring multiple boards together from multiple teams. Reorder your toolbar. I'm going to show you how. 
So on the left side, you have your toolbar with all the tools inside and you can simply drag them around to reorder them. For example, sticky notes I use a lot, so I put them up and templates are more similar to more apps, so I'm putting them down. You can also further customize your toolbar by adding and removing elements. First, open the more apps view here, and then there are two ways. You can either pin elements, for example, I use the mind map a lot, or you can also drag in and out. For example, the comments, I don't really need them in here. Use the official mirror app. Just search for mirror app download and then you find this page here. From here you can download it. And once you have it open, you can access mirror like this. Now, why should you do that? I think it comes down mostly to personal preference. But one thing that I like about the uh, app is that you have tabs here for all of the boards. So you can more easily stay on top of all of your boards and keep it organized. Create board jumps using links. This one is super cool. So here I have a start here page for a board and I want that people click on this part here and that they get into the first exercise. To do so, I can right click this element here and then I can click copy link. Now I have the link copied. I can go back to the text here, then add a link, copy the link in, apply. Now what happens if somebody clicks on this, they will be brought immediately to that part and that way they can can jump between different parts on the board and I can help them to do so using these helpful links. Depending on your preferences, you can also change the grid type that the board is using. Here's how. Click on the main menu, then on view, and then on grid. You can choose between non, line grid, or dot grid. If you choose the dot grid, you can also activate snap to grid. Afterwards, all elements, when you resize them, can be neatly snapped to the grid. And also, if you move elements around, they also snap to the grid, so everything is uniform. How to quickly cluster sticky notes. So here I have a bunch of sticky notes from feedback that I got for training. Blue are things people learned, green are things people liked, and then orange are things people didn't like. Ouch. But I'm going to cluster them now. I'm selecting them. Then I click here on cluster objects. I can choose what to cluster by. I'm going to select color. And now they're perfectly clustered and I can finally delete all of the things that people didn't like and pretend everything was perfect. Just kidding, of course. I think they were right. Set start view. There are multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the fastest one. Simply select what you would like participants to see when they open the board for the first time. For example, here, I want them to see this part. Then click somewhere on the background and then select set current view as start. And now it's set. You can also share a link with people that immediately brings them to part of the board. Here's how to do it. Select, for example, a frame, but it could also be a group or another element. Then click here on the three dots, then click on copy link. And if someone opens a link to the board, it will be brought exactly to that part of the board, as you can see here. How to structure your board right. What I recommend you to do is to structure it from top to bottom and then left to right. How does it look like? For example, let's take a look at a template here. We have three sections, uh, top to bottom, and then within each of the sections, we have different slides and those slides go from left to right. If you have a big presentation to give in Miro, often the problem is that the slides are in the wrong order if you want to present it. Here's a quick way to fix that. Click in the bottom left here to open the frame view. Click here on the three dots and then click on organize frames. And this will automatically resort the frames depending on how they are layouted on the canvas. When giving a presentation, there's also a way to toggle a dark background to give your slides a light box effect. Here's how to do it. Click on the preferences for the presentation and then click on dark background. Here you go. When you want to keep multiple windows visible during a presentation, it can be quite annoying that the mirror presentation always opens in full screen. If you want to force the presentation to be in a window, make sure that you go to the preferences here for the presentation and then toggle off start in full screen. During a presentation, you can also precisely control which tools participants can access that watch your presentation on the board. To do so, click here on timer voting and tools and then click on show creation tools and then you can control which ones can be seen on the left side. In my case I want the sticky notes to be seen so that participants can drop their questions below. You can also update the sharing settings in real time to control when people should be able to only view the board or when they should be able to also edit it. For this click here on the top right on share and then where it says anyone with the link can view switch it to edit when they should be able to edit it and then back to view when they should only be able to view it. On their side it updates in real time and that way you have really fine control and they don't destroy your board. Allow visitors without an account to add their name. To do this click on share in the bottom right and then a little bit hidden here click on share settings and then on permissions and then the last setting is adding visitors names if board is public and change this to visitors can edit their names. 
You can also easily add a password to the board as a means of an extra security layer. For this, click in the sharing settings here on set password. Next, a quick tip on how you can test how others can see your board if you share it with them. For this one, go to your browser and open an incognito window. That's possible in all modern browsers. Once you have the window open, put in the sharing link from the sharing settings, open it, and then you can test how somebody can see the board from their perspective. While recording these tips and tricks, Mio just released a new feature called Presenter Notes. And I think it's here to stay, so I'm going to show you how it works. So here I have a pretty visual presentation. And in order to add Presenter Notes, I can click on Present Once. And then here in the Preferences, I can click on Presenter Notes. When I open this, you see on the left side, a new window has opened. Here I have my Presenter Notes. I can add something to it and I can jump between the slides. And then what happens here in Miro is that it will, of course, follow what I'm doing here in the presenter window and I can also move it for example to another display to always have it in view while presenting. How to add activities to frames. So here I have a Q&A frame where people should take three minutes to write down questions. To add an activity now I can click here on the frame and then click add to activity list and then here in the bottom right of the frame I can click on this and add a timer for three minutes. Save this and now the timer is saved to the activity and when I present this slide or frame it will automatically start the timer as well. Now to reduce the bias in my Q&A I can also use what's called private mode. To do this I can click here in the top right in the app toolbar on private mode and once this is activated nobody will see what other people are writing down and hence they won't be influenced from each other. To add more structured notes to your board, you can use the Visual Notes app. You find it here in the app toolbar at the top. So click on Notes and it will open in the sidebar here. Here I can create notes such as, for example, a to-do list, meeting agenda, project summary, workshop notes or board annotations. Let's say I want to create an agenda like this here so I can even style it a little bit. And the second thing I want to show you is that you can easily add board elements from the board into the visual notes. So for example, here I have a frame with the agenda. I can simply drag it and pull it into the visual notes like this. Another feature features also that I can pin the visual note. Once it's pinned, that basically means if somebody opens the board, then also the visual notes will open for them to see. Another thing is that you can also export the board as a PDF. So then you have it as a PDF and you can also copy a link and that link will also immediately bring people to the visual notes when they open the link and click through it. Hide all comments on the board. This is helpful if you want to give a presentation, but you don't want to delete all of the comments on the board. For this, click in the top right here on the comments, then on the three dots here and then toggle off show comments on the board. Et voila, all comments are now hidden. Miro also keeps track of the entire board history. To see it, I can go to the top left here and click on main menu, then on board. And then from board, I go to board history and it opens on the left side here. Here I can see the entire activity on the board and I can also go to these elements here. To restore a board, you can look out for these restore icons here in the activities. And if you click on it, it will reset the board to that point in time. Also, if you work on a board frequently, you see in the versions tab also versions of the board that are automatically stored and you can restore them as a separate board. Next, the quickest way to lock a lot of elements on the board. So here I have a big presentation and I want to lock elements so people don't move them around accidentally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first select everything that is on the board and then I'm using the filter to first select the text, then quickly lock all of the text then select everything again, go to the filter again, then pen, then uh, lock all of that as well. And with that one, I continuously go through all the metal elements that should be locked. And I only leave out the sticky notes and other parts of the board that shouldn't be locked. And that's the fastest way to lock a big board. Collaborate asynchronously using the Talk Track app. You can find it here in the top right by clicking on Talk Track, and it basically allows you to record a screencast from the board that if you send the link to people for a screencast, they can stop at any moment and then interact with the board. So it's kind of an interactive screencast or presentation, and it's super handy to do. So here's an example of how it looks like. Hey, this is just me explaining the board. So let's first start here with the facilitation principles. You can also repurpose the comments as kind of a task management system. For this, just make a comment somewhere and then make sure that you tag yourself. I can say here, rewrite this email. Now I send this off and then on the right side in the comments bar, I show only the mentions and now I see all the things that I need to do here. Once I finished, I just click resolve and then the task is done. 
is the element information. All of the elements, sticky notes, shapes, and so on, they all save information about who created them and when they were last modified. To see it, click on the element, then go on the three dots and then go to info here. Then you can see that this one was created by René and also last modified by him on April 18. Clean up your color palette. If you work a lot in Miro, what can happen is that the colors that you have here as a choice, they really clutter up. To remove them and to bring order back into your color palette, just simply drag them out. You can do this for all of them to bring back a little bit of order and only have the colors that you really want. You can also create your own custom and versatile color palette and I'm going to show you exactly how. So the core idea here is that you need a color palette of four colors for each color and then you copy that over in your color palette in Miro because it stays with you from board to board. And the first step is that you need to go to a rectangle, then you open the colors here and you delete all colors you don't need. Step number two is that you add one row of like a dividing color. So here I have white and you see the white is always slightly different so it divides these colors from those. The last step is to add the custom colors. For that, click here on plus, then click on the eyedropper and select the first color you want to add. Then click done and it's added here into the first column. Then take the second color like this here and then repeat this for all the other colors that you want to add and you have them perfectly in your color palette. By the way, check the link in the description if you want to download our free color palette mirror template with clear instructions of how you can use them, the full color palette fitting to all of the sticky notes in Miro, as well as examples of how you can use those colors in action on your board. Since recently, you also have the opportunity to add your own brand colors to the very top of your color palette. And here's how. All you need to do for that is go to your dashboard then click in the top right on profile and then click on brand center. Once this has loaded, what you see here is that you can add your brand colors as well as your brand styling. Brand style is also a really cool feature to quickly add consistent styling to your slides and elements and also to be able to quickly restart templates that you find, for example, on the Mirrorverse. The first step is that you need to add your colors here in the primary and essence colors. And then as a next step, what you need to do is if you, for example, have a template, you click on it and then you have this styling button here. Click on it, then the sidebar opens and you can pick your brand style. If you click multiple times on it, you can quickly reshuffle it until you're happy with the style that you have. And at last, you can also add your custom fonts here in the brand center. All you need to do for that is add them here in the back end. And then when you are on a board and you select text, you can go to the fonts and then you can select the fonts from here. Simple as that. And you have your own custom fonts right in Miro. Copy and paste styling. To do this, go to a text, then right click and click copy style. Then go to another text and right click again and click paste style. And it will take over the styling and it will look exactly the same. And we make it a bit more beautiful and it looks like this. Ta -da. When using the pen tool, there's a feature called Smart Drawing and you can use that feature to draw common shapes using simple gestures. Here how it works. For example, I can draw a rectangle like this and it fixes to a rectangle and then if I do this, it deletes the rectangle in the back. When you have a collection of sticky notes, the size of the text can vary a lot depending on how much text there is in a sticky note. And that makes them a little bit tough to read. But there's one easy way to fix this. So what you need to do for that is you need to select all of the sticky notes, then go to the font size here, then look for the first number that's not grayed out. This is the biggest maximum font size that is available. Then click on it and now all the font sizes are uniform and they're much easier to read. Miro is an open canvas, which means that you can zoom in and out more or less as much as you want it. So the question always is, how big should you then size elements? What I recommend you to do is use 100% as your base zoom level, because this is also the default if somebody new arrives at a board. So you can click on the bottom right here to zoom to 100% and just make sure that everything is visible and readable in that zoom level and then you're good to go. If you have an image, you can easily remove the background of that image using Miro Assist, which is powered by AI. Here's how it works. So select the image, then go to the sparkling blue button and then click remove background and then it will work its magic and then remove the background as you see. And oh, I don't actually know where this is coming from, but yeah, I think the magic donkey has spoken. Like and subscribe. Speaking of images, you can also mask images. Click on the image, then click here on mask and crop. And then for example, you choose a circle and then you can crop it in a little bit and then easily mask a picture. Create line jumps in diagrams. So here I have a PERT diagram, which I know nothing about. 
and I'm going to show you how to create a line jump here. So here we have two lines and just select the top line, then click on type and then click on line jump. And then we have these beautiful line jumps here, which are a bit more aesthetic and help to better understand the diagram. Since you can zoom into mirror boards a lot, maybe some of your images, especially those that are JPEGs or PNGs, could look a little bit unsharp. So here's a recommendation for you. You can use a tool such as Vectorize AI to take that image and then vectorize it into an SVG. A vector simply means that it's a mathematical calculation and then it's super sharp. So what I can do now is I can just take this image here, click here, click replace from board and then select the SVG. And now it is super sharp and crisp. Add Excel or Google Sheet data right into Miro. This one is so cool. I'm going to show you how it works. So here I have a Google Sheet with the results from a Google Forms survey. And all I need to do is I need to select the data that I want to bring into Miro. In that case, this uh, column here, I press Command C on the keyboard to copy it. Then I hop over to the Miro board. I press Command V to paste it. And then I can choose to paste it as a table or sticky notes. I'm going to choose sticky notes. And then all of them are pasted right in here. And the only thing left for me to do is to format it, to bring it in here. And now I have everything right inside Miro. How cool is that? Of course, the reverse is also possible, so you can also get data from Miro into Google Sheet or Excel. For example, here I asked the question, how many hours do you spend in meetings every week and did the survey write in Miro? I have some responses here and all I need to do is I need to select all of them, then click on the three dots here in the context menu and then click on export to CSV Excel. Do that, it downloads it. Then as a next step here in Google Sheet, I simply click on file, then import, and then I'm going to select the CSV that I just exported. Exported. And as you can see, all the content is right here in Google Sheets now. Import a presentation. This is super helpful if you have a presentation in PowerPoint or in Google Slides and you want to bring it into Miro because you also want to work together there later with the people that you're giving the presentation to. The first step to do that is that you export your presentation as a PDF and then drag the PDF into Miro. Next, click on the slides here in Miro and then click here on extract pages, then on all and extract all of the pages into Miro. The next step is a little bit more tedious, but you need to create a frame around each of the pictures that you have here now. So click on one of the pictures, then on more and click on create frame. This creates a frame around it, then snap it to the slide that you have here and repeat that for all the other slides. Now I have frames around all of my slides here and I can quickly press on present here at the very top and then present my slides right in Miro. You can also embed websites, for example, to create a dashboard right in Miro. Here's how to do it. So I have some code here for an embed that I have from a dashboard. Then I copy this here. Then I click on plus for more apps and I search for embed. And then I have the embed iframe app. I click paste, I click embed, and then it creates this embed here. Let's move it a little bit uh, down. And it doesn't look like much, but if I click here now on the view icon, as you can see, it loads my embed. And this is a live website that updates in real time. And I can also click around here because it's interactive. Import a YouTube video into Miro. This one is super easy. Just copy the video link from YouTube and then paste it right into your board. And as you can see, it loads in here and then I can play it from right inside Miro. You can also create clips from videos that when played only show part of the video. For this, click on the video and then here on the scissors, create clips from video. Then as you can see, uh, the video opens and you have a timeline here below where you can decide which part of the video you want to clip out. Then click add clip and it automatically adds a new embed here in Miro that if you play it, it will start exactly at that time in the video. Copy as image. This is super helpful to instantly document something on the board. For example, here I have a frame. I can click on the frame, then on three dots, and then I can click copy as image. Now it's in my clipboard. I can go into Gmail and I can post it immediately into an email and then share it with somebody very quickly. Use sticky capture to bring your physical sticky notes right into Miro very quickly. Here's how. So I have this image here saved on my computer. I click on plus. I search for sticky and then sticky capture. Open this app. Now I can select the image from my computer and it loads it here in Miro. It's not an easy image. You will see the selection is a bit off. And I recommend that you don't convert it to the text because you will always have a little bit of mistakes in here. Now I'm going to update the selection.
there you go now i just simply click add to the board as you can see we have all the sticky notes in here let's delete the background image here and then organize them a little bit and as you can see they're super easy to read and i can just work with them like normal sticky notes now how to use Miro for free, at least for 24 hours. Not a lot of people know this, but there is a special version for Miro that's called Miro Lite. So just type in your browser miro.com slash light, then open it and it will immediately create a Miro board, but you don't have to sign in or anything. And then you can start working on that board and you can even share the board with other people to work with them together, but it's only valid for 24 hours and then it will be locked and afterwards also deleted. Translate your mirror board. For this one, we're going to use an app and you find it if you click here on more apps and then search for board trends. And then you have the board translator app. Now this is open, I can just select text and then I can click on translate selection and the settings I said it's going to be English and now it has translated this German saying that doesn't make any sense in English and now we have it in English and that was pretty quick. How to quickly and for free add icons to your mirror board. Let's say you're working on this nice slide here and you're just missing that last icon to complete it. Then head to the left side, click on more apps, then search for icon finder, then open the icon finder app. And here I'm going to search for birthday, press enter, and then look for a really nice icon like this one here, put it in. And that's how you add icons to your mirror board. How to quickly fix typos on your board. For this one, click again on more apps, then search for spell checker we have it here open this one up then select what you want to fix then it shows you the typo then adjust it and there you go attach mirror boards to google calendar for this one go to google workspace marketplace yes something like this exists then look for the mirror app and then install it into your google workspaces account once it's installed we can go to your calendar and then here you can create an event and then click on add attachments on Miro and then select a Miro board that you want to uh, use in your Google Calendar. Like this weekly retro here, attach it and then save. And now my weekly retro board is right here inside my Google Calendar event. With the Miro add-on installed, we can also now use Miro right in Google Meet. Here's how. So I have a meeting here and there's actually a guy in here that just repeats everything that I say. It's super annoying. Anyway, I'm going to show you how we can collaborate with him. You click on activities, then your add-ons, Miro, click on that. That brings us to the board picker. Then I'm going to uh, pick a board, which in this case is going to be the weekly retro. Then I can select the uh, different permissions, click embed board, then start activity, and it will load the board right in Google Meet where I can collaborate with other people and work together with them. So here we are, and from here on, I can interact with the board and run my retrospective with the people in the meeting. By the way, we can do exactly the same thing in Zoom as well. And to do this, click on apps in the bottom. Then you have the app drawer here and then look for Miro or install it right into your Zoom account. Once you have it in here, click on Miro. Then it will open up again this board picker. I can select the board and it's more or less the same process. And here again, I can now interact with the board and work together with other people. Take screenshots with the web clipper. So look for it on the Google Chrome web store, then install it into your Google Chrome profile and then just head to a website for example here to stripe and then in the top right click on it then select the right team and then click on whatever you want to uh, screenshot i'm going to just simply select the visible area now back to the mirror board uh, if you go on uploads the upload app you can click on web clipper and now we have it in here and i can just simply drag it in and it's very fast and easy to use and super helpful if you want to collect inspiration or simply just screenshots from the web how to edit Google Docs right inside Miro. So here I have a Google Doc, then click on the top right and click copy link. It has to be a public link. Then go into Miro and just paste that link right onto the board. And what you see here, it will load the document. I can preview it. I can go through the pages as well. And I can also double click on it to edit it. And this also works with Sheets and also with Google Slides. Create a timeline in Miro super fast. Here's how to do it. Click on more apps on the left side, then search for timeline and you will find the timeline builder app. Click on this, then you can set your settings, for example, quarters from Q1 to Q4. Then you can also add swim lanes into it. You click insert 
and boom, there you go, you have a perfect timeline. Find inspiration in the Mirrorverse. So the Mirrorverse is Miro's community curated library of templates that you can freely duplicate into your own account that people just shared and it's amazing. There's so many cool templates inside here for things such as uh, planning, retrospective, icebreakers, agile workflows, and many, many more. So go check it out, super valuable and helps you to quickly start a board. If you are anything like me, then sometimes you forget the exact board title that you gave a board and then you lose it somewhere in your own account. To find it, I recommend you that you use the search board field in the dashboard to find it again. As an example, I did some planning around a trip and I remember writing something about Slovenia. And in here I can find the exact board and when I click on it, it even opens the exact part of the board where I mentioned that word. Oh, what a video, right? As you can imagine, this took quite a lot of time to uh, produce and edit. Probably never going to do something like this again. Actually, I got a new haircut and this sweater here. Oh, let me tell you, I had it on for five days. Oh my God, it actually became a work risk. If you liked or learned something from the video, then uh, leave a like, a comment, share it with people or subscribe to the channel or also check out what other cool stuff we are doing over at facilitator.school. And thanks for sticking around till the end of this video.